and damaging your crops that you want to harvest from. So that's one method that doesn't rely on, on pesticides. And then in nature, there's always something eating something else. There's always lizards eating ants or in this world everything's eating everything else. And it's the same in your field. When you see the pest, it's not just your pest there. There are other things that are, that are eating it, like the lady beetle. That there loves aphids, it loves lots of different types of insects. So when your pest comes in, you're going to have other insects there as well. And we call this biological control. And it's also good for you to observe the insects in your field and see which ones are good and which ones are bad. So this control is biological control. The one you're most familiar with uh, is chemical control, the use of pesticides. And you walk into AgroGrace or another store and you know you see there's many, many different types. Some of them are liquids, some of them are powders. Uh, and I know it's often easier to find one that you find works and then stay with that because then it's less complicated having to read all these different bottles. But pesticides are very different and you have to, uh, you have to learn about them. Take your time to read the labels, talk to your extension agent from RADA and find out, talk to the, the people in the different uh, agrochemical supply stores and find out which is the best one for your problem. And you should find out what your pests are, are what your best pesticide options are, and then make the best choice. So you've also got to think about human health, because these pesticides, they're all toxic, they're all poisons, but some are worse than others. And we've given you all this protective gear, and you should also have it yourselves, uh, and use it appropriately, because with some of these pesticides, even a small amount can kill a person. So. You have to be very responsible about it. It's a serious part of your job as a, as a farmer. You also have to think about uh, the environmental damage because some pesticides kill bees and if you need bees to pollinate your crop, you have to know when to spray. Spray late in the evening or maybe early in the morning. Uh, you have to th uh, some insecticides are very bad against fish, so if you're near a river, you, may, you shouldn't choose a pesticide that uh, will, will kill fish. All this information uh, uh, is, is on the labels. And then something that's very, very important is once you choose which pesticide you use, you have to record it. So you spray it, you have to write in your book how much you sprayed, against what pest, uh, what time of the day it was, whether it was raining or not. So you can build yourself a record of uh, your pesticide use. So this is a way of how you can uh, educate yourself through your own experience about how good things are. So you can get more and more efficient in your crop protection. So that's number four, control choice. I know you, all, you, already, you already have a lot of experience uh, on which, uh, which pesticide to use. Remember how you apply it is very important, very good coverage. The pH is incredibly important. Make sure you use your pH meter bring the pH to 6. Uh, also a, a spreader sticker because in cabbage it's very waxy. When you see rain on cabbage it runs straight off of it and the same thing happens to your pesticide. You need the spreader sticker to make sure you get good coverage and that it sticks onto your, onto your plant so that, so that the worms can eat it. And then the fifth and final thing that I like to mention with the integrated pest management, IPM, is follow-up. You've spent all this energy making sure your crop is healthy. You spent all this energy going into your field, identifying your pest and deciding what number, what populations they are. You've uh, spent the time thinking about whether you need to spray or not, or whether you need to control the pest. And then you've actually got up, you put on your protective gear, you've gone into the field, you've, you've spoken to the, uh, to the agrochemical supply uh, representative, you've chosen your pesticide, you've gone in there, you've sprayed, but now you need to go, go in there and follow it up because you don't know whether it's worked or not. You may come back a few days later and, it, well, it looks like it's worked, but you need to go in there and see, are my plants okay? I hope I didn't, hopefully I didn't burn them. Are the insects dead or dying? Is the level of damage less? And that you write all that up in your, in your book as well. The level of control, Sometimes if you use a pesticide against one pest, what happens is you drop that pest down, but then you get another one come up. Often uh, in beans, when you try and control aphid and you spray uh, certain pesticides, 
you might see that leaf miner comes up. So you need to re record this down because maybe next time I won't, I'll use a different pesticide because I don't want the leaf miner coming up. So that's the secondary pests. Uh, then you need to decide whether your control criteria were good. When you decided with your control decision and your monitoring, right, I'm going to spray when I see five worms per plant. Maybe in your experience, five, uh, five worms was, was uh, too much because even though you sprayed, they still kept on doing damage. So maybe you decide, right, next time when I go in to count the worms, if I see three instead of five, three per plant and I spray, and then record. When you're going there, checking how everything's worked out, you need to write everything down. So at the end of the day, at the end of the crop, you can sit down, you can see which pesticides you used, which control criteria you used, and then make decisions for the next crop. There are many insects that can do harm to your crops. Some common pests include aphids. Winged aphids carry and transmit plant viruses and are problematic in solanaceous and cucurbit crops, including tomato, eggplant, peppers, Irish potato, pumpkin, cucumber, honeydew melon, and watermelon. Abandoned crops and broad-leaved weeds, which often harbor viruses, should be removed in order to control aphid populations in surrounding areas. White flies are small white flying insects that often take flight when the plant they are on is disturbed. They are normally found on the underside of leaves. Aside from sucking plant sap, they also transmit viral diseases. The Callaloo Pest Complex Within the Callaloo Pest Complex, Two of the caterpillar species use webbing to roll the leaves around themselves for protection. Both caterpillars and beetles have the potential to rapidly destroy a lot of foliage and can do much damage to callaloo. The cabbage worm complex. 